So, today is Friday the 3rd of January, 2020. Shabbat Shalom to those who keep the Sabbath. Um, I have a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to go over. So, I started the video last night and I said uh, that there was speculations that it was an assassination attempt. And it seems that that was exactly what it was. So, they were not wrong. Um, and then by the time I finished last night... Uh, it was confirmed. I, I wasn't paying attention to the Twitter feed. So tonight, I'm doing a video on uh, what's next, USA and Iran. Um, so I'm going to go over a whole bunch of stuff. And first of all, I'm going to cover this. So this article came out roughly 25, 30 minutes ago. It says, Iraq official says airstrike targets Iran-backed militia. So I'm going to talk about this briefly. I'm going to go over about four or five articles that are happening stateside before I go into everything that's, uh, whether the oil price is going to be affected, I mean, all types of stuff. Staging in the uh, Strait of Hermos, um, I'm going to go over a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so this article here says, I'm going to skip a bunch of this. It says, uh, in more violence, another airstrike, almost exactly 24 hours after the one that targeted Sol uh, Soleimani killed five members of an Iran-backed militia north of Baghdad, an Iraqi security official said. Speaking on condition of anonymity because he was not authorized to talk to reporters, and the Iran-backed Popular Mobilization Forces confirmed the strike, saying it hit one of its medical convoys near the stadium in Tanji, north of Baghdad. Okay, so here it says the group said none of its top leaders were killed, and a U.S. official said the attack was not an American military attack. So there are conflicting uh, reports coming out about this right now. It's all over Twitter. Um, I usually won't talk about, I mean, I will show you the articles on this, but I won't elaborate on until we get confirmation, until I get a confirmation. So I'm going to continue to watch this. This isn't the only one. There was another one that just recently happened, I think, in uh, Sanji. So I'm watching that, and I'm watching this. Uh, while I'm going live right now, um, there will probably be more stuff that occurs. So, like I said, I'm going to cover a few articles here. This says, Astrophysicist says he knows how to build a time machine. Astrophysicist Ron Millet believes he found a way to travel back in time, theoretically. 
The tenured university Connecticut, uh, Connecticut physics professor recently told CNN that he's written a scientific equation that could serve as a foundation for the actual time machine. He's even built a prototype device to illustrate a key component of his theory. And though Millet's peers remain unconvinced uh, that his time machine will ever come to fruition. To understand Millet's machine, you need to know the basis of Albert Einstein's theory of special uh, relativity, which states that time accelerates or decelerates depending on speed at which an object is moving. So the link to this article is in the description. Uh, it would definitely be rad if that was true. Uh, this article says it's the first orbiting uh, garbage collector, or, or is it a new kind of space weapon? Uh, the article goes on to say there's a lot of, of junk in space, tens of thousands of pieces of it, circling the Earth at thousands of miles per hour, each of which is an orbital bullet that can endanger satellites, man capsules, and the International Space Station. The European Space Station, our space agency, is about to pull one of the big hunks of garbage from orbit, but there's a problem. The same tech that could help make space cleaner in the long run also might make it more dangerous. That's because the ESA's Clear Space One orbit garbage truck, as well as other spacecraft like it, could double as a weapon. Swiss startup Clear Space designed the Clear Space One vehicle to intercept a chunk of debris, latch onto it, and drag it back into Earth's atmosphere. Or it can safely burn up. ESA has scheduled the cleanup of missions for 2025 and has even identified its target as 265 pound piece of an old rocket orbiting 310 miles above Earth's surface. As always, all the links are in the description, well most of them, because I have so many articles that I'm going to go over, and not in their entirety, uh, but I'm going to try to as much as possible because there's so much going on, and I'm by myself so um, and as always this is a live podcast my name is Ryan this is the Kingsman Report live podcast and if you want to call in live the number is scrolling across the bottom of the screen 1408 and enter the meeting ID 534-233-4758 uh, and you can also send email to kingsmanreport2019 at gmail.com and also the chat is running um, and I've got it where all the chats are integrated. So if you're on DLive, Twitch, YouTube, anywhere you're watching, all the chats are integrated. Um, everyone in all those uh, platforms can see each other's chats. You can talk amongst each other. So they're all integrated with each other. Uh, this article says one person was killed and several wounded to get, uh, during a stabbing incident in Austin. It says one man was killed and several people stabbed during an incident in Austin, Texas, officials said Friday. It says the man uh, killed was in his 20s and was pronounced dead at the scene, Austin Travis County EMS said in a series of tweets. And several police with stab wounds were taken to hospitals, including a man in his 50s with a potentially life-threatening stab wound, Austin Travis County EMS said. Four patients were being treated and prepped to transport, the agency tweeted. This is important. Um, China pneumonia outbreak mystery virus probed in Wuhan. The Chinese authorities have launched an investigation into the mysterious viral pneumonia, which has infected dozens of people in the central city of Wuhan. A total of 44 cases have been confirmed so far. 11 are considered, quote, severe, officials said on Friday. The outbreak has prompted Singapore and Hong Kong to bring in screening processes for travelers from the city. It comes amid online fears that the virus could be linked to SARS or severe acute respiratory syndrome. The potentially deadly flu-like SARS virus killed more than 700 people around the world in 2002 to 2003 after originating in China, and there has been speculation on social media about a possible connection to the highly contagious disease. Wuhan police said eight people have been punished for, quote, publishing or forwarding false information on the internet without verification. The Nuan Health uh, Commission said on Friday it was investigating the cause of the outbreak. In a statement on a website, it said that it had already ruled out a number of infection sources, including influenza, avian flu, and a common respiratory disease, but did not mention SARS. 
So this avian flu here, I did. I read an article yesterday that there was a turkey farm that was uh, contaminated with avian uh, influenza, and they're going to be uh, doing a calling there. So I'm also keeping an eye on that. It uh, goes on to say there's also been no human-human transmissions in the statement added. However, a number of those infected worked at a seafood market in the city, leading authorities to clean the area. A spokesman for the World Health Organization said it was aware of the outbreak and was in contact with the Chinese government. There are many potential causes of the viral pneumonia, uh, many of which are common in severe acute respiratory syndrome, uh, coronavirus, the spokesman added. The HWO is closely monitoring this event and will share more details as they have them. Uh, the latest outbreak appears to have sparked memories for those who dealt with SARS epidemic 18 years ago, and at the time, the HWO criticized China for underreporting the number of cases of SARS in southern Chinese province. In 2002 and 2003, epidemic, the virus affected more than 8,000 people in 26 countries, killing 349 people in mainland China and 299 in Hong Kong. Famine and pestilence, uh, well, thus far, uh, disease. Uh, this is just a, a little article here. I'm not going to read all this. It says, uh, the next ring chime. Pro may also have a new design. So basically, they're integrating um, Amazon's, you know, listening device into the Ring. So Amazon acquired Ring. Now they're going to put uh, your Amazon personal assistant in the Ring doorbell. So uh, it's going to be very interactive as it spies on you. Uh, so you can look forward to that. Don't buy it. All right, uh, I don't, I haven't heard of anyone really covering this, but I cover Turkey a lot because I think they're a catalyst. You got, okay, you have a perfect storm brewing over in the Middle East right now. From not only what um, happened last night with the airstrikes, what's going on right now with the airstrikes, you have Turkey and Libya, you have Russia over there, you have everyone that is involved in the Book of Revelation is gathered in the Middle East right now. Um, so things are probably going to pop off here pretty shortly. I mean, they, they already are, but it's going to probably get a lot more serious. It says, a mere hours after Turkey's parliament, in an emergency session, voted to authorize its military to send troops to war-torn Libya in order to stave off advancing pro haftar forces on the capital. There are new reports rebel forces have downed a Tur Turkish warplane south of Tripoli. And Ghazi-based General Khalifa Haftar had already long ago essentially declared he would enforce a no-fly zone for all foreign aircraft, especially Turkish aircraft. And by the way, uh, Turkey's going to be the lead of NATO's army in 2021. That is also important. Uh, Poland is right now, as of 2020. Uh, the article goes on to say, Sky News Arabia was the first to report Thursday, quote, based on our sources, the Libyan, Libyan army shoots down Turkish plane to the south of the capital of Tripoli. And in a statement immediately after the Turkish aircraft downing of what appears to be a UAV drone, a spokesman for Haftar's Libyan National Army said, according to Sky News, we reject the existence of any foreign power in Libya, no matter what. No details are as yet unclear. If confirmed, it would be the second Turkish mili military aircraft within three weeks brought down by the LNA after a drone was shot down December the 14th. All right, um, what I'm going to do here, and uh, nobody's really watching right now, so go to view this. I'm going to go ahead and play these. So this video that I'm about to play is uh, the, CCT, the CCTV video footage of the actual strike. So I'm going to play this, um, and then I have... The one I played last night whenever I streamed um, of the missiles hitting their target over the horizon. So I'm going to play this one first, and then I'm going to play 
uh, the other one. This is making its rounds all around uh, Twitter, uh, social media, so it's probably not anything new. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. I do not believe there's any sound to it. And if it doesn't buffer. Alright, let's see. You saying this media cannot be played, it can be played. Hold on. Alright, here it goes. And you can clearly see it struck the vehicle that Salamani was in and uh the fire from the explosion. I'll let it play again here. So that is the CCTV footage of the uh, drone strike from the Reaper uh, drone on the vehicle that Soleimani was traveling in. Uh, all right, now I'm going to play the other video here. And this video is the one that's over the horizon. Uh, came out one thirty a.m. my time here, so. All right. Hold on just a second. Okay, so I'm not going to read this article because this is one of the first reports that came out. It says, Iraq rockets fired at Baghdad airport, seven people killed. Uh, I'm not going to read that. Uh, this article is, Iran leader killed in strike linked to years of attacks, killing of more than 1,000 troops, U.S. or 1,000 U.S. troops during Iraq war. Um Injured veterans, Army widow testify against Iran in federal court, says uh, Military Times speaks with the expert witness, injured uh, veterans and Gold Star families who are suing Iran in federal court for their part in the killing and injuring of U.S. service members, and they join more than 200 plaintiffs who are represented by New Jersey-based OSIN law, for law firm and Tab Turn. Uh, so while the U.S. military has killed Hussein Soleimani, the architect of the Iranian-based attacks on U.S. troops during the Iraq War, the legal effort by the U.S. by the U.S. victims of those attacks and its demands make Iran pay for them uh, remains unsolved, unresolved. So this is the uh, this article says world's most feared drone, CIA's MQ-9 Reaper, killed Soleimani. So Iran General Qusam Soleimani was killed Thursday night in an airstrike. We all know this. The operation to kill Soleimani is believed to have been overseen by the CIA, the U.S. Air Force, pilots, uh, pilots fly Reaper from Creech Air Force Base in Nevada, and some are second to the CIA in Langley, Virginia. According to U.S. Air Force, the Reaper is a, an, quote, armed, multi-mission medium altitude long endurance remotely piloted aircraft that is employed primarily against dynamic execution targets and secondarily 
as an intelligent collection asset. It provides a unique capability to perform strike, coordination, and reconnaissance against high-value fleeting and time-sensitive targets. President Trump ordered the strike on Soleimani's convoy as it traveled near Baghdad International Airport, and the hit also killed Abdul Mahdi al muhandis the deputy commander of Iraqi, Iraq's Iranian-backed Popular Mobilization Forces and founder of Khattab Hezbollah, a terrorist group that killed a U.S. contractor last week in a rocket attack. When asked if the Air Force was responsible for the strike, Pentagon spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Campbell told the Washington Examiner, We have no nothing additional beyond the statement yesterday, and the Pentagon statement did not specify who is responsible for the attack. The CIA directed the Washington Examiner to the Pentagon. As a silent as it is deadly, the Reaper drone was well suited for the strike, according to retired Air Force pilot and Heritage Foundation senior fellow John Venable. The MQ-9's range, loiter time, and precision strike capability make it an ideal armed ISR, which is Intelligence Surveillance Reconnaissance, uh, platform for low-threat environments, uh, Venable told Washington Examiner. Assuming the U.S. had intel on the rough itinerary of Soleimani's flight and or had been following the movements of Mohandis uh, in, the, in and around Baghdad, the Reaper's capabilities allow the U.S. not just to be overhead to observe the meeting, but to eliminate those threats. Retired Air Force Lieutenant General David De uh, Deptula told Washington Examiner, quote, the, MK the MQ-9 Reaper is the perfect weapon system for this job and highlights air power's ability to project accurate, timely, and lethal power, Deptula said. Uh, the strike was measured and appropriate response after 18 months of restraint by the Trump administration to a series of aggressive Iranian violations of international law. He set a red line, warned Iran not to cross it, and when they did, he acted appropriately to defend American person, personnel and interest. Uh, the article goes on to tell you who produces this um, and more of its capabilities and how long it's been in use. Uh, this article says, Trump defends killing of Iran Iranian general accuses him of plotting imminent and sinister attacks on Americans. Um, President Donald Trump on Friday defended his order to kill a top Iranian general about 24 hours earlier, accusing him of plotting imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel. Hello, Marcia G. Uh, she also says, Marcia G also says in the chat, Horrible that people had to die. That said, I'm so glad that we have a president who takes no crap. Uh, me as well. Uh, so the article goes on says, making a short statement at Mar-a-Lago using a teleprompter, Trump said he took action last night to stop a war. He did not take action to start a war. Of Qusam Soleimani, the president said, we caught him in the act and terminated him. President Trump speaks about the recent U.S. strikes in Iran, January 3rd, 2020. Um, and this stuff here it says, his reign of terror is over. He said in his first comments on camera since the U.S. attack on the general's vehicle near Baghdad Airport. Last night at my direction, the United States military successfully executed a flawless precision strike that killed a number of terrorists anywhere in the world, Trump said. And I showed you those strikes if you're just tuning in. I already played the airstrike uh, videos. Uh, I played the one that was over the horizon. I played the CCTV. All the ones that, if you're paying attention to what's going on, they've, they've been playing these. Uh, it's all over social media. Uh, this article says, Is Israel had advanced notice of U.S. plan to kill Iranian General uh, Suleimani, or Suleimani, report says. Israel had advanced notice of the U.S. plan to kill Iranian military leader General Qassam Soleimani. Israeli military and diplomat analysts reported Friday night while refraining from providing further details due to heavy military censorship. Our assessment is that the United States informed Israel about this operation in Iraq apparently a few days ago. Uh, Barak Ravid, a journalist and commentator with deep sources in the Israeli security establishment, said on Channel 13. 
an Israeli army officer with knowledge of Israeli military assessments who spoke on the condition of anonymity because he did not have permission to speak to reporters, told Los Angeles Times that the attack on Soleimani did not come as a surprise. The reactions of Israel's uh, political leadership to Soleimani's assassination were mostly positive, though deep concern was registered throughout the leadership. Iran and Israel maintained warm relations for almost four decades before the 1979 Islamic Revolution that overthrew the Shah um, and imposed a theocratic Shiite Muslim regime that for four decades now has called for, quote, death of Israel and is accused of backing and masterminding numerous terror attacks against Israel or Jewish targets, including the 1992 and 1994 attacks on the Israeli embassy and the Jewish community center in Buenos Aires that left over 100 people dead. Hezbollah and Lebanese-based Iranian proxy militia has in recent years been accused of perpetrating further attacks against Israeli targets in India, Thailand, and Bulgaria. So what I'm getting at here is all, all of these groups, if you read the book of Revelation, um, there's a perfect storm a brewing right now. Israel, we all know that um, Israel wants a piece of Iran real hardcore because they're still producing uh, cold water cooling plants. They're still uh, enriching uranium. Um, and Netanyahu is pretty much fed up with it. And uh, he's looking for a reason to go. And if we go, you know that 100% Israel has our back and we have theirs. So um, that's why I titled this, What's Next? Uh, I'm going to get into possibilities of what's going to occur within our economic structure with this. Uh, oil prices going up, um, and then some staging that's also going on with our military. Uh, this article came out, um, also says Iraqis praise Trump after he kills, quote, their tormentor, celebrate in the streets of Baghdad. Um, if you watch the video, this is also going around social media. You can see them with their um, Iranian flag, and they're all running up and down the street. Uh, it says spontaneous celebrations broke out in Iraqi uh, Tahrir Square on news of the killing of key Iranian military figures by the U.S. on Thursday. <clears throat> Thursday, sorry. Um, I saw a tweet, and I don't think I retweeted it, but I um, saw a woman on there that said she is from Iran and that this guy made um, um, Weinstein look like a saint. So, I mean, they... He was a horrible person. Uh, Michael Dorn, a foreign policy expert and senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, tweeted out footage on Friday of Iraqis taking to the streets. Iraqis are celebrating. You don't need to know Arabic to understand what they are saying. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Dorian said in a tweet that rel uh, relevers in Baghdad are, quote, rejoicing at the death of their tormentor. Happy Iraqis bake cakes and sweets to celebrate the bright morning after and to thank President Trump. Warren also tweeted out a photograph purporting to show Iraqis baking cakes in praise of President Donald Trump. The United States killed Iranian uh, Major General. Same dude there, and it's going to go into all that. It's going to just elaborate why they are celebrating. Okay. Because the people are happy does not mean that the guy's behind the scene. There is a shadow government that operates in the Middle East. If you don't know who they are, you've got to learn who they are. They're called the Twelvers. They're called the Mullahs. Uh, they believe that if they wash the world in the blood of uh, their enemies, that they can uh, speed up uh, a type of self-fulfilling prophecy. So that means that they want to go after Israel first and foremost. Um, they want to go after anyone that's against them. They want to usher in uh, their Mahadi, or what we call the Antichrist. Uh, they will, I don't know when, but they will retaliate. Uh, that it's, it's inevitable. I don't know how, obviously, I don't know when, but it is inevitable. Uh, Soleimani's takedown fuels new partisan warfare at Capitol Hill. Now, because, so I'm going to share this stuff, and, and I'm sharing articles. These aren't my uh, beliefs necessarily. These aren't, I'm reading stuff that they're reporting on. So we have liberal Democrats, socialist Democrats at Capitol Hill, in our Congress, in our House, 
that are actually upset about this. One of them is uh, uh, um, that Omar lady, M whatever her name is. I can't stand her. I have an article on her, but she's upset about it. Uh, then we also have Kane, who wants to file paperwork to stop any progression in Iran. And they're going to try to say that he went against, or he didn't notify Congress before he went. And others, like Lindsey Graham, are saying that they were briefed before any attack happened. So uh, This article goes on to say, I wish they would leave the uh, partisanship and hypocrisy aside. Says Congressman Dan Crenshaw, former Navy SEAL, providing insight to the attack on Qasem Soleimani. The killing of Iran General Qasem Soleimani in U.S. airstrike late Thursday immediately touched off fresh and partisan clash on Capitol Hill, with the Republicans cheering the death of the brutal military commander as long overdue, and Democrats voicing concern that they weren't consulted and that it could drag the U.S. into a new Middle East conflict. How significant is this? We killed the most powerful man in Iran short of the Ayatollah, and he was the right fist of the uh, Ayatollah, and we took the Ayatollah's arm off, Senator Lindsey Graham, a Republican of South Carolina, said at Fox and Friends. The Pentagon confirmed that Soleimani, the head of the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps, Quids Force, was taken out in the U.S. strike. But in Congress, where partisan tensions already are high over the impeachment of Trump by the House, and the pending Senate trial, the reaction split down those uh, same lines as it had when Trump pulled the U.S. out of the Iran nuclear deal in 2018. Graham described it as a defensive move by the U.S. based on strong intelligence of the potential attacks and one that would send a message to U.S. foes across the globe. This was a preemptive attack to let everyone know from North Korea to uh, just anyone else that if you come after America... After Americans on President Trump's watch, you do it at your own peril. Graham said, warning that Iranian oil refineries could be the next if Iranian aggressions continue. All right, so Democrats, meanwhile, described the killing as a dangerous escalation with Senator Tim Kaine, which I'm going to get into that, uh, of Virginia, grouping it with the Iran deal pullout as a brazen decision to make the region less stable. As I have warned for years, Trump's decision to tear a diplomatic deal uh, that was working <coughs> and resume escalating aggressions with Iran has brought us to the brink of another war in the Middle East, Cain said. Hussam Soleimani was a despicable killer, but this drastic escalation of hostilities waging a military attack on Iraqi soil over the objections of that country and without congressional authorization will increase the threat of American troops, diplomats, and families in the region, he said in a statement. Payne called on Congress to act to, quote, stop President Trump from entangling America in yet another unnecessary war in the Middle East. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Shifty Schiff, Democrat from California, said it was a move that Congress didn't authorize, and, quote, American people don't want war with Iran. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democrat from California, said that the strikes was was, quote, provocative and dis disproportionate and, uh, and put America's lives, Americans' lives at risk. Americans' leaders' highest priority is to protect American lives and interests, but we cannot put the lives of American service members, diplomats, and, fur and others further at risk by engaging in provocative and disappropriate actions, she said. Tonight's airstrike risk provi uh, provoking more dangerous escalation of violence. And America and the world cannot afford to have tensions escalate to the point of no return, Pelosi said. She, too, complained about Congress being kept in the dark, saying the action was taken without any authorization for use of military forces and without consulting Congress. Uh, it seems to me we've got a few, uh, well, from, from what I understand, I follow this guy, and if you don't follow him, go check him out on Twitter. Uh, Imam of Peace. Um, go check him out. He's been completely exploiting, um, I think her name is Ilmar, Omar, or whatever her name is, that she has links to the Qatar. So if that is true, if that is in fact true, would he release information to people that had the potential to uh, leak information to different people that... They all talk to each other, so Hezbollah, Qatar, all of them, they're all in cahoots with each other. Just different names. All, all the same enemy, all the same principles, all of that stuff. 
would he give information to Congress and take the risk that maybe some of these people that could be, um, you know, spying internally leak this information to different sects of of these uh, terrorist organizations? I think he's smarter than that. I don't think that he's just going to release information to anybody, especially when it comes to doing something that he did. Um, he's he's a lot more intelligent than that. Uh, it says the full Congress must be immediately briefed on this serious situation and on the next steps under con- uh, consideration by the administration, including the significant escalation of the deployment of additional troops to the region, she said. In the Senate, uh, Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut echoed similar sentiments of fear about Iran's response, warning the reprisals against American troops and that such actions result in, quote, more, not less Americans killed in the long run. Now it's up to Congress to press the president to disclose his legal basis for this action and the plan for how our nation manages the fallout, he said. I doubt there is congressional authority for this strike, and I doubt the president has a plan for what comes next. But there are questions Congress must ask now. So, um, I think they're... need to sit back and watch, uh, watch what he does. Yeah, Ilhan Omar, outraged at President Trump's decision to kill Iranian terrorist vows to try to stop him. Now give me a break. That's all of this says. Uh, I'm not going to read. It says, will those in the congressional authority step up and stop him? That's what I'm saying. Go look at Imam of Peace on Twitter, and he's been exposing Ilhan Omar for pff, all the entirety of the summer, basically, and showing everyone how she has ties to the Qatar. This woman needs ousted. She needs impeached. She needs voted out. If they're not going to impeach her, um, she needs gone. Um, this I'm not going to go into because I just read a lot of what he said prior in the in the previous article. It says Kane introduces resolution to block war with Iran. Um, it says the resolution is privileged, which means Republicans cannot block it from reaching the floor. Excuse me. And comes a day after the surprise drone strike that killed Iranian General Qusam Soleimani, the leader of the uh, Islamic Revolutionary Guards, Lee Quid's force. So, looks like uh, the other side of the aisle is trying to uh, block crap. This is just ridiculous. Uh, State Department urges U.S. citizens to leave Iraq immediately. Now, I'm sure everybody knows this has been going around too. The State Department issues a secret alert Friday morning, urging Americans in Iraq to leave the country's uh, country immediately. The warning comes hours after the promised harsh retaliation against the United States for an airstrike that killed top Iranian General Qusam Soleimani at the Baghdad International Airport. Pro Iranian militiamen in this picture. This this shows them, um, you know, spray painting and, and burning the embassy there is what that picture is. Uh, It says, due to the heightened tensions in Iraq and the region, we urge U.S. citizens to depart from Iraq immediately, the State Department said in the alert. The alert also uh, also said all uh, consular operations are suspended at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad due to Iranian-backed militia attacks at the U.S. Embassy compound. U.S. citizens should not approach the embassy, the alert also said. Um, And it's come out in... in, uh, bunch of people are tweeting out that uh, I don't think we're any, for the time being, any longer going to be training any of their military because of such a high risk of um, something possibly popping off. Uh, This also says American oil workers in Iraq exiting country at U.S. government request. Um, So, it says, uh, while urging Americans to take the earliest flights out of the country, it's also informed citizens they must stay away from the U.S. embassy in Iraq. And uh, it's pretty much the same thing, but they're also warning uh, any U.S. oil workers in the oil fields over there that they need to get out too. So they are they are looking that that uh, there's going to be an escalation and retaliation. Um, so they're pulling all of our people home. And uh, like I said, there's more strikes going on tonight. I've already talked about a couple of them. Uh, so there's been more strikes as of around 5.15 or so. There has been more strikes going on over uh, over there, so I'm watching that also. I'm not necessarily paying attention to Twitter right now, but it's definitely popping off. They said we killed, uh, they said there was a strike, five more possibly killed. Now they're saying there's 
there wasn't. So uh, this article says oil prices can make a run at eighty dollars if U.S. Iran conflict intensifies. Now this one says eighty dollars. I have another article that says one hundred and fifty dollars a barrel. So oil prices could surge towards eighty dollars a barrel if escalating geopolitical tensions disrupt Middle East crude supplies. An analyst told CNBC on Friday, with energy market participants participants on tender hooks after the U.S. airstrike killed the Iranian and Iraqi military personnel. International benchmark Brent crude traded at 68.65 Friday morning, up from 3.6 percent, having earlier spiked to uh, an intraday high of 69.16. U.S. West Texas Intermediate stood at $63.38, over 3.5% higher, pairing some of its gains after climbing to $63.84 or $63.84 earlier in this session. Okay. Now this is important. Apecon, if Iran closes Strait of Hormuz, uh, crude could jump up to $150 a barrel, okay? So this is what I was saying, uh, you know, one says $80, jump up to $80 per barrel. This article says $150 per barrel. So there's, you know, it's not much of a difference there, but uh, still a difference. Uh, the reason I want to pull this up, um, it says... Um, when we first reported the news on Qusan Soleimani's assassination, one of the first things we showed was the placement of a U.S. naval ship around the globe, emphasizing the location of aircraft carrier CVN-75 Harry Truman, which is currently located off the Straits of Hormuz. If you know anything that's happened in this area since last year, or wait, yeah, since last year, I believe it was June 20th last year, I have the article after this, in the Gulf of Mexico, and may or may not have seen instrumental in the uh, Baghdad airport strike that took place, uh, that took out Soleimani. So, if you look at this CVN-72, that's the USS Abraham Lincoln. Um, it's underway in the Pacific Ocean following the Mideast deployment. Alright, the CVN-75 is over here. right here and it says the CVN-75 the USS Harry S. Truman is underway in the US 5th Fleet Area of Operations to support maritime security operations in international waters so why is one of our two carriers currently deployed in the immediate proximity of the Strait of Hormuz. Simple, the tiny strait represents the most important choke point for global energy flows, with roughly a third of all seaborne trade oil flowing through the strait daily. So 35% of all seaborne trade oil flows through the Strait of Hormuz, or Hormuz, right in this area. So we do have uh, ships staging in the area over here. It's important because uh, a lot of people are pointing this out. And then the 2019 uh, Iranian shoot down uh, of American drones. So that's what I was going to point out because this also happened in the same area. Um, Iranian Major General and IRGC Commander Hussein Soleimani said that the drone took off at um, 14 uh, local time of U.S. military base, which is, you know, 12 14. The Persian Gulf flying towards the Shabar allegedly, and right here it says it violated the Iranian airspace near the Strait of Hormuz, and that's when they shot it down. So, um, we're going to see what happens there. Uh, Nick Cho, in your personal opinion, was this a good strategic decision by the U.S., or will this have... Adverse effects threatening our national security. I'm currently not sure. Um, okay, so my personal opinion. Here, as far as being here, which I'm going to read this article at the end here because I, you know, I, I ask what's next. So, 
here, I think we may see some retaliation as far as um, different groups or sleeper cells or lone wolves or whatever you want to call them possibly do something here. Um, I think what we're probably going to see is uh, retaliation towards probably, and I said this in a prior video, Okay, I, I did a video, it was called 2020 Year of Conflict, and I did one called Wars and Rumors of Wars. That one was a month ago. 2020 Year of Conflict was the end of December. I pretty much said all this stuff that just happened was going to happen. Didn't know it was going to happen like this. Didn't know it was going to happen this soon. I think, um, I think they'll probably go after our number one ally in the Middle East, that being Israel, if they're going to attack anybody. That's what I think. Threat to national security. DEFCOM hasn't risen from what I've looked up um so i don't i don't think um it's, it's hard to tell um i know our intelligence agencies and i know that we all talk to each other and i know that they watch dissidents everywhere um so i'm, I'm sure they're they're monitoring really hardcore the people that they uh believe are uh, enemies of the state with within our country if if they're here and, I, and i'm sure you know there are some here probably so to answer your question in my personal opinion um i think it was a good i think it was a good strategic decision as far as getting that guy out of there because they've already appointed another guy um which i'm, I'm going to show you here shortly um yes as far as strategic decision yes probably um and will this have an adverse effect threatening our national security? Maybe. Um, hard to tell right now because, like I said, we're still going at them over there. So it's kind of hard to tell. Um, this weekend, probably, and early next week will be more telling on, um, on what goes on. Buffering there for a second. Always happens whenever I start to say what I think is going to happen over there. Um, here's what typically happens to the financial markets after a major Middle East crisis event. All right. So we're buffering hard right now. Really hard. I'm recording this. If it goes down, I'm going to keep going. Um, but it's buffering pretty hard right now. All right. We're in the green. So this is it. It's, it's still going to buffer. It says, here's what typically happens to the financial markets after the major Middle East crisis events. It's buffering real hard. I'm watching it here on my screen. Um, so sorry about that. Hang on. Okay, we're uh, back, I guess. So it was buffering real hard. Anytime someone asks me a question like that and I start to say what I think is going to happen over there, that's what happens here. It'll start buffering and then it'll knock me down. Um, all right, so oil prices tend to see sustainable gains following Middle East crisis events, while stocks eventually churn higher as safe haven assets Gold and treasuries fade from the, their initial pops, according to historical analysis. This is gold prices jump roughly 4% on Friday after the United States airstrikes on Baghdad killed uh, Qusam Soleimani, one of Iran's top military commanders. Uh, safe Haven's assets rose as well, with bonds and the U.S. dollar moving higher. U.S. equities slipped with the S&P 500 down about 0.8%. 
and the Dow Jones Industrial Average losing more than 250 points, or 0.9%, as investors took some risk off. If the financial markets follow historical precedent, many of those changes will reverse in the coming months. CNBC used hedge fund uh, analytics tool Kensho to analyze financial markets following 20 crisis events in the Middle East over the last three decades, including the tax on oil facilities in Saudi Arabia last September. The analysis found that oil prices see a positive change more than 80% of the time in the month following major events. Gold and stocks followed as the next most successful asset classes. Looking at a three-month horizon, stocks and oil railed further while safe haven assets give up their gains. Treasuries and the dollar post negative turns over this time frame, and on average, gold prices are uh, flat. Opinions on near-term oil prices were mixed following the attack, and UBS said and note that investors should not expect an extended rally, while SunTrust said the strike was, quote, likely to place a new higher floor for oil. Analysis were somewhat cautious on stocks amid uncertainty about how, how Iran would respond. In barring escalation, the backdrop for equities remains uh, favorable. Uh, Evercore ISI said in a note to clients, while UBS suggested that investors, quote, consider protection strategies. Soleimani was a key figure in the Iranian politics and the leader of uh, an elite Iran Special Forces unit, and he had been blamed for an attack earlier this week on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. And the target attack also killed Abu Mahdi al Mahandis, the deputy commander of Iran, Iran backed militias known as the Popular Mobilization Forces. Um, So I'm going to check here. All right, I'm still online. I'm going to keep going then. Uh, U.S. to send 3,000 troops to Middle East after embassy attack Soleimani killing. The United States is sending approximately 3,000 soldiers to the Middle East um, after thousands of people stormed the compound U.S. embassy in Baghdad. Three U.S. defense officials and one U.S. military official confirmed to the embassy NBC News on Friday. The news came hours after an American airstrike killed General Qassam Soleimani, the commander of Iran's secretive quids force and one of the country's most powerful figures. Uh, but U.S. defense officials said the deployments were not in response to the strike. The deployment of additional soldiers from the brigade of the 82nd Airborne Division, based at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, comes after thousands of people, most of them affiliated with the Iran-backed Shiite militia group, the Tav Hezbollah, descended on the U.S. Embassy compound, Tuesday. Um, it said the soldiers will join roughly 650 others already deployed to the region and stay there for some 60 days, the official said. The immediate response force will be spared, uh, spread throughout the region with some soldiers in Iraq and others in Kuwait. As previously announced, the immediate response force, IRF Brigade of the 82nd Airborne Division, was altered to prepare for deployment and are now being deployed, the Pentagon said in a statement. The brigade will, will deploy to Kuwait as an appropriate and precautionary action in response to increased threat levels against U.S. personnel and facilities and will assist in reconstitu uh, reconstituting the reserve. U.S. and Iraqi officials said the attack on the embassy compound began with a large crowd gathered after funerals for some of those who were killed in the U.S. airstrike Sunday. Protesters marched to the embassy compound where they were tried several times to breach security and enter the main building, according to U.S. official with knowledge of the situation, who said the crowd there uh, threw Molotov cocktails over the walls and tried to burn down the entry gates. At least 25 militia fighters were killed in U.S. airstrikes Sunday on weapons depots in Iraq and Syria that the United States said were linked to Qatab Hezbollah. So I'm back for whoever just joined. I, I went down for a second. Luckily, uh, my internet is good here, so it's good at uh, catching itself. Um, okay, so this article says World War III trends as hawks rejoice at Trump's decision to assassinate Iran, Iranian military leader. It says his peace advocates voiced alarm at the very 
at the very real prospect of all-out conflict with Iran following the assassination Thursday night of that country's top military leader on orders of U.S. President Donald Trump. War hawks who have had their crosshairs trained on Iran years enthusiastically celebrated Trump's decision and even suggested the president should go further by targeting the nation's oil refineries. All right, like I said, reading these articles, these are not uh, my views. These are other people's views. So, I'm reading this. Please feel free to voice your opinion in the chat in the comments. I'm just going to read these articles because I'm trying to give everyone uh, a view of different people's perspectives on what's going on. So we know the Democrats uh, are going to try to stop it. Legislation was introduced to try to stop Trump from what he's doing. Um, then we have uh, this article that came out, uh, Ilhan Omar, the tar asset. Uh, we have all this stuff going on. So I'm just reading these articles. Uh, doesn't mean that I believe these articles per se. So I'm just reading these articles to give everyone other people's opinions on what's going on over the Middle East. The article goes on to say to the Iranian government, if you want to stay in the oil business, leave America and our allies alone and stop being the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world, tweeted Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican of South Carolina, a longtime supporter of regime change in Iran. Uh, Republican Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, um... Uh, Tom Cotton, Jim Risch, and Ben Sass, Nebraska, join the chorus of applause hailing Trump for taking, quote, de uh, decisive action. Rita Parsi, executive vice president at the Quincy Institute for Responsible uh, Statecraft, tweeted in response to the torrent of praise that hawks are celebrating uh, Solana, uh, uh, Soleimani's assassination, not, to, not because they believe it weakened Iran or the IRGC, or that Iran will lose in Iraq, but because they believe we have passed an irreversible point of escalation. From where, um, from here, war is unavoidable, they believe, uh, Parsi added, and celebrate. The likely unlawful U.S. assassination of Sol Soleimani and the uh, jigonistic applause provoked uh, led many to express fears of global conflict briefly capsulating World War III to the top of Twitter's trending list. Uh, Trump, for his part, simply tweeted an image of an American flag following the strike. And if you guys haven't seen that, uh, that was out there too. It says Trump's decision to kill Soleimani, as well as at least six others with a drone strike in Baghdad, came after the Pentagon threatened Iran with preemptive action in response to supposed indications it was planning attacks on U.S. forces in the region. Though the Pentagon did not offer a shred of evidence that Soleimani or militia groups were planning attacks, corporate media outlets uh, dutifully echoed the Trump administration line, leading some commentators to see parallels with the buildup to the Bush administration's 2003 invasion of Iraq. I don't see any way to stop what's coming. War for the Mediterranean to the uh, Indus and harsh uh, repression in the U.S. that may be... Um, Biotate the 2020 election, said Barnett Rubin of the Center on Inter International Cooperation. This is the test for the Democrats. Um, have our leaders learned anything since 2003? I fear the answer. Observers warned that the U.S. assassination of Sol 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 Soleimani on top of the Trump administration's violation of the nuclear accord last year and other aggressive actions effectively foreclosed the possibility of a peaceful negotiations with Iran. Whatever happens next, understand Never stop pointing out that Donald Trump walked into office with no crisis with Iran, said Stephen Miles, executive director of Win Without War. He then filed his, uh, filled his cabinet with warmongers, walked away with multilateral diplomatic accord, and purposely, uh, purposefully engaged in, quote, maximum pressure. He owns this. Iran Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali uh, Khamenei quickly vowed, quote, harsh retaliation response to Soleimani's assassination, and Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif accused the U.S. of committing, quote, an act of state terrorism. So I'm not going to continue to read uh, any more of that. Link's in the description. Um, you guys feel free to tell me what you think. Um, it says, Iran appoints Ismail Khani. Uh, I'm sure I'm... I'm I'm pronouncing his name horribly here, but I mean, honestly, he gives a crap. Uh, Ismail, Ismail, uh, Connie, the new chief of the Quids Force after top commander death in the U.S. strike. So this is the photograph of the new leader that's going to take place. 
of the one that just got uh, offed in the uh, uh, drone strike in uh, Baghdad. So that's the new fellow there. So this says, Iran's Supreme Leader appointed uh, as his new head of Revolutionary Guard. Foreign operators arm after its commander, Qusam Soleimani, was killed on Friday in a U.S. strike on Baghdad Airport. Following the martyrdom of the glorious... Li listen to this, okay? Like I said, I, I... Like I said, I'm reading articles. I don't believe this stuff that's in here, but I'm, I'm reading... Uh, because this comes from uh, their uh, website, all right? So these aren't my words. I'm reading these words. So um, just keep that in mind. So in this quote from um, the Quds Force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, the Ayatollah Ali Kalamenzi said in a statement, this is what he said, not what I said. It says, following the martyrdom of the glorious general, Haj Qasim Soleimani, I name uh, Brigadier General Ismail Khani as the commander of the Quds Force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Okay. Once again, not my words. Those are their words. Um, says Khani was described as uh, Khamani as the one of the most decorated commanders of the guards during the 1980s and 1988 Iran-Iraq War, and the orders for uh, the quids force remain exactly as they were during the leadership of Mar. <laughs> they keep calling him a martyr. Soleimani uh, said this other guy here. I call on the members of the force to present and uh, cooperate with General Khani and wish him divine prosperity, acceptance, and guidance. Uh, meanwhile, Iraqi President Baram Saleh called for the restraint after Soleimani's death. We call on everybody to restrain themselves. So, uh, Saleh said in a statement characterizing the strike as, quote, aggression and saying Iraq would be uh, de uh, destabilized if, quote, voices of reasons did not prevail. Okay, so their words, not my words, just reading a news article here. And it goes on to say tens of thousands of people took to the streets of Toronto to protest against America, quote, crimes reported in AFP correspondent after Soleimani was killed in the strike. Chaining death to America and holding up posters of Soleimani, the demonstrators filled the streets for several blocks in central Tehran after Friday's prayers. And meanwhile, the leader of Iran's opposition group that has been in exile, in, um, exile the National Council of Resistance of Iran, or the NCRI, called the killing of uh, an irreparable blow for Iran's Islamic regime. The killing is a, quote, irreparable blow for the regime of the mullahs. Okay, so... If you're just tuning into this, and I said earlier in this, this is beyond what you see going on in front of us. They're probably going to bog me down for saying this again. Research who the Twelvers are. Look at who the Mullahs are, okay? It is beyond them. Those guys are like the shadow government that uh, kind of operates behind the curtain in our government. The Mullahs is these guys here. I told you they believe in self-fulfilling prophecy. They believe in washing the world in the blood of their enemies. We'll bring forth the Mahdi, the 12th Imam, and that too, if you're a Christian, uh, would be the Antichrist. So it's the mullahs. It's, it's beyond what you're seeing. That is a state. I mean, it's reality what's going on there right now. But that is the stage being played before everyone. Behind the scenes, you have this group, the mullahs, and you have... Uh, the military-industrial complex, if you want to call them that. Um, and they're going to come together. They benefit off these things, and a bunch of a bunch of people are probably going to end up uh, dying for this. Will we go to war? Um, I don't know. It's kind of early to speculate, but I don't know. But that group that I have highlighted right there, the mullahs, those are the guys behind this. If you don't believe me, just research who the mullahs are. I've known about these guys, this group, for probably the past decade. Um, so pay attention. They want the 12th Imam, the Antichrist, to come forward. That is who these guys are. Uh, it goes on to say, um, it is now time to expel the mullahs from the region, in particular Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. She added, uh, Rajavi accused Soleimani of being quote, one of the biggest criminals in Iran's history, and, quote, personally implicated in the massacre of thousands of people in the region. 
Uh, with the elimination, the process of overthrowing the Mullah's regime will be greatly accelerated, she added. The NCRI, the political wing of the public, uh, People's Mujahideen of Iran, the PMOI, has long pressed for the overthrow of the Iranian regime from its Paris base. So it says, NATO closely monitoring station. Following the airstrike, the NATO military alliance has been monitoring the situation in Iraq closely with an eye uh, to the safety of its training mission there. And it says, uh, NATO is monitoring the situation in the region very closely. We remain in close and regular contact with the U.S. authorities, said its spokesperson Dylan White. At the request of the Iraqi government, NATO's training missions in the country is helping to strengthen the Iraqi forces and prevent the return of this group here. Um, it says, earlier in the day, the Iran's foreign minister, Mohan Javad Zarif, had said that the U.S. moved targeting Soleimani would come with grave consequences and described the slain general as, quote, the most effective fighting uh, force fighting dish, which is, you know, this group here. Might as well say it's ISIS. But anyways, like I said, it's the mullahs. That's the, if you don't know who the mullahs are, it's the shadow government in the Middle East. Uh, they, they have their own, like, secret military. They have all this other stuff. A lot of people don't even know who they are, um, or probably have never even heard of them. But it's the Mullahs. You can you can bet on that one. Um, Iraq president condemns U.S. strike. I'm not going to read this because um, I kind of read a little bit of that earlier. Iran says assassination of Soleimani was an act of international terrorism. That has been reiterated in the articles that I read earlier. Saudi Arabia calls for restraint after Soleimani's killing. I also just read that in the uh, previous article. Iran has begun planning counter-strikes on the U.S. for decades. Trump's lit fuse. U.S., uh, so it says, uh, but precisely where it's hard to predict because the Iranians have been planning for this moment for 40 years, according to a NATO military intelligence officer based in the region. They're going to respond. They have uh, to, they have to at this time, is considered a declaration of war, said the official who cannot be named because the work uh, undercover in the Middle East. They have been setting the table for decades for this moment, and their proxies have been carefully selected and trained in places like Lebanon, obviously, uh, bah uh, Bahrain, Iraq, Yemen, and Gaza, they said. And what you also have to know about the, the mullahs, uh, they're ahead of all those groups that were just named in this. So it doesn't matter if they're... Uh, Qatar, Hezbollah, uh, any of those groups, the mullahs are over those. Those are like the sleeper cells of those guys. They call the shots. They're the shot callers for all those guys. Um, this says, more than mines, Iran is ready to harass and destroy the U.S. Navy. Says in the event of of war with Iran, the U.S. Navy's small aging force of Persian Gulf-based minesweepers would struggle to locate and disarm Iran's underwater mines. Consequences for U.S. military operations, not to mention world trade, could be severe. And four of the Navy's uh, 11 1980s vintage Avenger-class minesweepers uh, sail from uh, Bahrain and, if war broke out, would be responsible for clearing the strategic Strait of Hormuz and other important waterways. Uh, that's why I brought up the Strait of Hormuz earlier. So in uh, early uh, 2019, the drone was shot down. And on top of that, um, Mad Dog Mattis said that that should have been an act of war. And it wasn't. But, I mean, it probably was a catalyst for what happened last night. Um, and then we also have Truman that is posted up over in the Strait of Hormuz as well. So it says, but the Avengers suffer from obsolete equipment and a lack of spending. The minesweepers, quote, routinely need repairs, one Navy officer told ProPublica reporters Robert Federici and Megan Rose and T. Christian Miller. The Navy for years has diverted minesweeping funding into the development of multi-mission littoral combat ships, and the LCS were supposed to replace the Avengers. But the new ships were proved expensive, unreliable, and unsustainable for many of the missions the Navy hoped they would handle. 
The sailing branch in 2016 canceled development of a dedicated mine hunting robot for the LCS, all the while the Avengers slowly have rushed away. The companies that used, uh, they used to make a variety of spare parts no longer exist, the reporter added. And a sailor recently aboard one ship said the sonar meant to detect mines was so impressive that in training exercises it flagged, flagged dishwashers, crab traps, and cars in the ocean's floor as potential bombs. Minesweeper USS Devastator with the hull number MCM-6 was non-operational for so long that sailors jokingly referred to her as Building 6 since she never moved. Okay. Uh, senior Navy official called uh, their mined warfare fleet in the Persian Gulf a mix of aging ships, high-tech drones, and helicopters, quote, the best and the brightest around. A Navy spokesman recently said the minesweeper fleet was, quote, fully capable of fulfilling its mission of finding neutralizing mines. The Navy's underwater drones, the spokesman said. Nick Show, if I was to explain the Twelvers, I would be here all night long. Uh, just Google Twelvers. Uh, go to YouTube and type in the Twelvers. Twelvers is like a uh, um, a term for them that people that know who they are call them the Twelvers because they believe in the um, uh, Twelfth uh, Mahdi, Imam, whatever you want to call them. Um, but it's the Mullahs. The Mullahs, Mullahs, whatever you want to call them, the Mullahs. Uh, but they are basically a shadow government of the Middle East. They have an army. They're over the government. Um, they pull the strings over there. They're over all the little Qatar, Hezbollah, all those little terrorist organiz organizations that you see uh, that are surrounded Israel. They, uh, Those groups are like their, um, their sleeper cells, basically. But... Um, what they believe in is in self-appealing prophecy, that if they can uh, get a war going, that they can wash the world in the blood of their enemies, and that they will bring forth the 12th Imam or the 12th Mahdi, and that he will come forward, and that will be their leader, and we call him the Antichrist. They call him um, basically their, their God, their Savior, their reincarnation of their leader. Um, that sums up a little bit of what it is, but that's basically what it is. So, uh, yeah, just Google uh, the Molos. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, Glenn Beck talks a lot about them. Just go uh, to Blaze and then uh, type in the Molos, and you'll, he goes into depth of who they are um, in a very short segment. So, like I said, I've known about them for a very long time, uh, but no one really talks about them. No one even really knows who they are. But they've been around for a very long time. They date back long, 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 long time. It's not something new. Uh, it says, while this article goes on to say, while the spokesman conceded there are challenges with all older ships, including maintenance and repair, that might make it uh, longer for the ships to be, accomplish their mission. He said maintenance problems have dramatically improved of late. And he noted that as recently as July 6, 2019, all four of the older minesweepers based in the Persian Gulf, Gulf had been at sea at the same time. An officer aboard one of the ships called it a photo exercise and said it was an extraordinarily rare to see all four out at once. So that's basically what this article is based upon is mines. Uh, more than mines, Iran's ready to harass and employ. So this article is basically saying our um, minesweepers, ships, um, are outdated. They'll pick up anything, but they don't think they're good enough to pick up potential mines that have been planted there by Iran's Navy. Uh, this article says, You're so dead. Iranian troops aren't safe as long as Israel owns the Syrian skies. Uh, this article may be more uh, true than um, some people believe, but the IDF is one of the most dangerous air forces on the face of the earth. Um, let's go back and look what they did in the late 1980s whenever uh, Saddam Hussein was trying to acquire nuclear um, potential over in the Middle East. They did bombing exercises and uh, pretty much destroyed it. On top of that, there's rumor to say that uh, some Assad went over there and dis disassembled um, some of the reactors that they had started to build as well. Um, on November 19th, four unguided artillery rockets 
arched out of the Syrian territory into Israel airspace into the northern Galilee in the Golan Heights, and these were detected and promptly destroyed by Israel, Israel's Iron Dome air defense system. Uh, that prompted this ineffectual attack from Iranian forces. Like the Ouroboros, the snake that is forever preoccupied devouring its own tail, uh, the sideshow war between Israel and Iranian forces in Syria seemingly stretches out into an infinite series of violent affronts um, repaid in kind. Since 2013, Iran has, built, Iran has built up its military presence in Syria, not only to combat rebels opposing the Syrian government under Bashar al-Assad, but to build up military infrastructure that could pressure Israel, including the, by transferring arms to proxies like Hezbollah. Over that same period of time, Israel has retaliated with hundreds of airstrikes blasting the Iranian bases. For example, in August, Israel warplanes killed two people in an attack described as a preempting um, as preempting a scheme to deploy a swarm of drones to attack, uh, attack targets in Israel. Several commentators have connected the November 19 rocket attack as being a response to Israel's assassinated um, Baha Abdu al attah commander of Palestinian Islamic Jihad, uh, with a surprise airstrike in Gaza on November the 12th. The same day, Syria reported a missile attack on the home of another PIL leader, uh, living in Damascus, named Akram al Ajori, uh, killing his son and one bystander. Palestinians then responded by launching hundreds of rockets at the Israeli targets, and the IDF retaliated against that with more airstrikes and a surge of fighting that lasted for two days. Thus, Israel's retaliation for the November 19 rocket attack was inevitable, and however, its scale of violence took observers by surprise. Starting around 1.20 a.m. local time on February 20th, Syrian uh, radars reportedly lit up in Israeli jets approaching from the Golan Heights and through Lebanese airspace released over a dozen precision-guided missiles at targets in Syria. And Israel insisted it warned Syrian air defenses not to open fire. So I'm not going to read the whole of the article there. But, like I said, if you know anything about um, Israel's IDF, their attacks um, in the Middle East, whenever they were building their nuclear reactors, they're pretty lethal. They're actually very lethal. Um, this article says, Killing Iran's Qusam Soleimani changes the game in the Middle East. I know all this may sound repetitive, but um, I, I, I'm trying to give a perspective of all these different people writing articles. Um, it says on... Uh, I don't want to read that. The strike took him out. Um, so the Quid's force, with perhaps between 10,000 and 20,000 fighters in its organization, provides training, weapons, organizational guidance, and other support to a range of pro-Iran groups. The IRGC, with the Quid's force, is the lead, um, is the key Iranian liaison with the Lebanese Hezbollah the strongest paramilitary organization in Lebanon, and one that attacked Israel and the U.S. Iran's, at Iran's behest. The Quds Force also works with the Pal Palestinian terrorist groups like Hamas and Islamic Jihad, along with other nefarious organiz organizations in other countries. When the United States clashed with pro-Iran forces in Iraq, the Quds Force made them far more deadly, providing them after or providing them after 2005 with the sophisticated explosives that could penetrate U.S. armored vehicles, killing almost 200 Americans. Um, so this part down here says, Soleimani's killing is only likely to strengthen Iran's hand politically. It says many Iraqi politicians by necessity and in some cases by choice have close ties to Iran and pressure will grow to oust U.S. forces from the country. If there is a back and forth between the United States and Iran, um, it, it is simply the case that Iran um, has more allies and more influence there, and many Iraqi leaders are likely to bow to Iran, Iranian pressure. U.S. military force in Afghanistan and Syria are also at risk, though both are already well defended due to threats from uh, ISIS, uh, the Taliban, and other dangerous groups. The IRGC and its proxies also uh, strike at official U.S. embassies and government-related targets. In 1983, the Iranian-backed Lebanese Hezbollah blew up the U.S. Embassy. I already read a bunch of all that stuff. I'm not going to read the entirety of that, but... Um, 
Look for the moles to rear their head. So this is just more reiteration. The article says Russia, Iran share, quote, U.S. oil in northern Syria. If you want to read this, the link's in the description. But it's, this is an interesting article. IAF chief U.S. strike on Iran-backed uh, Iraqi militia is a potential turning point. Israeli Air Force Chief Ahmad um, yeah, Amikam Norkin on Tuesday described strikes on Iran, Iran-backed Iraqi militia by the United States as a, quote, potential turning point in the campaign against Tehran. Uh, it says Israeli officials have recently laminated that Jewish state was alone in the fight against Iran in the Middle East. Um, it says the American strike two days ago in Iraq uh, is a potential turning point, Norkin said, speaking at a conference hosted by the uh, Cataclysm Financial newspaper. And it was. So how, how will Iran retaliate for the assassination of Hussam Soleimani? Hang on just a second. I'm going to look at uh, another article I have on here. All right, this is, this is where I want to get to. As Iran's forceful revenge against the U.S. is likely to include cyber warfare, and experts warn the attacks could be devastating. So Iran's leaders vowed to exact a forceful revenge against the U.S. Friday in response to an American drone strike that killed the Iran Quidian forces, Soleimani. Um, Nick Show asks, where do I find all these articles? I appreciate all the different perspectives. Um, so, I have I actually have an app that I use. Um, I go to, I go to Zero Hedge for people for, because they're not mainstream per se. I go I go to them for um, more of a realistic approach, and they're not biased. So I go to them because they give both sides. A lot of these articles these are are mainstream news articles, but I use an app uh, that I get a lot of these articles from. Plus Twitter, uh, but. I mean, I take that from my great grandfather. Uh, he read news all the time. First thing I do when I get up is I just read news articles, and then I kind of decipher through them. But because I don't tend to be biased, I uh, I read news articles and then I just kind of put them all together. And what I do here is I kind of try to give everyone the same type of perspective that I that I have by showing, you know, all the different outlooks or everyone's different opinions. Uh, He also said, Yeshua bin David talks about QAnon being headed by artificial intelligence. He says there are many different AI programs, but Tyler is the main. Uh, his beliefs are pretty out there, but it's worth checking. Uh, I have an opinion about QAnon. Um, but, I mean, I'm, I, I won't necessarily express it on here. Uh, I do, I, I mean, I do read it. Um, I have the QAnon app. I do read it. But as far as our artificial intelligence goes, there's a very interesting uh, verse out of Daniel. And it says that um, iron will be mixed with miry clay. Does that mean artificial intelligence or chips being mixed with human beings? Will the Antichrist be a type of artificial intelligence person? I mean, we, we don't know until it actually happens. But that's, that's as far as I think. But, I mean, it's... You can think all types of things like this, but um, so where does my username come from? The Kingsman Report. Uh, my name is Ryan, which means Little King. Uh, a Kingsman is um, so we're all sons, daughters of the King, Most High. Um, we're Watchmen, so that's where it comes from. Um, but you know. Ryan means a little king, so instead of saying this is, you know, Ryan's report, uh, the Kingsman report, and Kingsmen because, like I said, we're 
sons and daughters of the Most High, or watchmen on the wall, uh, and then, you know, uh, I rely on other kingsmen to give me news, send me articles, call in with their opinions, and that's basically where I got it from. It's actually old. I had the media thing for a long time. I deleted all of it uh, and then started back up again recently, just last year, as a matter of fact. Um, so the article goes on and says, Iran leaders vow to exact a force for revenge against the U.S. Friday in response to an American drone strike that killed the Quds Force head. And uh, now cybersecurity and defense experts are bracing for a possible Iranian cyber offensive that could target online infrastructure across U. U U.S. military and private sector. Experts told Business Insider that Iran has spent years building out its computer warfare capabilities, and since 2010, when Iran f uh, faced a cyber attack on its nuclear facilities, the country has focused heavily on beefing up its cyber defense operations. Iran is an intelligent cyber opponent with the army of people's testing our systems every minute of every day. It is the ultimate game of cat and mouse, Sam Curry, chief security officer of Cyber Reason, told Business Insider. However, the U.S. has also focused heavily on building up its cyber defenses during that time, according to uh, Kirsten Tott, former cyber, cyber security advisor to the Obama administration and managing director of the Cyber Readiness Institute. I absolutely think that we will look to attack uh, our that they will look to attack our critical infrastructure on the homeland, but our capabilities and our preparedness for that type of attack is strong, and our military is extremely well prepared for this, Todd told Business Insider. U.S. defense efforts will also be bolstered by a recent leak of Iran's cyber operations on a dark server, according to a charity right, former NSA analyst and current cyber threat analyst in Insights. Uh, these types of attacks could be devastating if the target is ill-equipped with proper defense, However, recent disclosures about how Iranian cyber groups operate uh, has left them scrambling to change tactics and cover past operations. This does give Iranian opposition an advantage right set. Here's what we know about Iran's capacity for online warfare and what a cyber attack could look like. Says in the years that followed, U.S. military officials warned that Iran was emerging as a leader in cyber warfare, and they are going to be forced to be—they are going to be a force to be reckoned with, with the potential capabilities that they will develop over the years and the potential threat that will represent that they will represent to the United States. Uh, then Air Force General William Shelton predicted in 2013. Since then, Iran has been linked to sophisticated cyber attacks against Israel, Turkey, the U.S., and the U.K. And uh, Iranian hackers have proven capable of cyber attacks that brought entire countries to their knees. In 2015, Iranian hackers caused a massive power outage in Turkey that lasted more than 12 hours. Uh, anything they have targeted in any country could potentially be fair game in any other country, Curry said. And Iranian cyber attacks are likely to target U.S. critical infrastructure. These links are in the description, uh, but this is why I titled this uh, What's Next, because I'm giving you um, articles from the media of what um, they're kind of saying could be a possibility. This article says, uh, New York, Los Angeles ramp up security to prepare for a potential Iran, Iran attacks. Uh, major U.S. metropolitan areas are taking extra measures to protect high-value assets and their civilians from revenge attacks following U.S. airstrikes in Iraq Friday that killed top Iranian general. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio tweeted Thursday night that the New York City Police Department will take immediate steps uh, to protect key NYC locations from any attempt by Iran or its terrorist allies to retaliate against America. Uh, we, will ha we will have to be vigilant against the threat for a long, a long time to come. Blasio also tweeted, uh, worried for our city plus our nation. Without the approval of Congress, the, U the U.S. government effectively declared war on Iran tonight, and the American people had no say in the matter. Despite voting time uh, and again to stop endless wars and bring our troops home, this will not end soon. We'll not read the entirety of that because I'm sure everybody probably saw the news conference on that. 
So this next article, and this is from Paul Joseph Watson. It says, Iran has Hezbollah sleeper cells in the U.S. ready to strike. All right. As major U.S. cities ramp up security to prepare for potential Iran-backed attacks. Paul Joseph Watson. Authorities in major U.S. cities are monitoring developments and ramping up security in preparation for any potential Iranian-backed terror attacks following the killing of Iran's Quids Force General Qasem Soleimani. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio tweeted in a tweet is taking, uh, tweeted that the NYPD is taking immediate steps to protect uh, key NYC locations from the attempt of Iranian terrorists. Um, so, meanwhile, in Los Angeles, LAPD tweeted that we are monitoring the events developing in Iran and that while no credible threats have emerged thus far, we will continue to communicate with the state, local, federal, and international law enforcement partners regarding any significant intel that may develop. Uh, the department is committed to ensuring the safety of our vibrant and diverse community, and we ask every uh, Angelino to, st to say something if you see something, said a follow-up tweet. With New York and Los Angeles preparing for possible terrorist attacks in response to the killing of Soleimani, other major metro areas will likely follow suit, reported Zero Hedge. The world has entered in uncharted waters on the third day of 2020. Anything, including a major attack on U.S. soil, seems possible at the moment. It is widely acknowledged uh, fact that Iran has Hezbollah sleeper cells embedded in the West ready to carry out uh, retaliatory attacks. This year, the London Telegraph reported on how Britain intelligence services believe Iran has organized and funded sleeper cells across Europe, including the UK, and could greenlight attacks in response to a conflict in the Gulf. Yeah, uh, Brian... Sorry, if I, I'm horrible at names. Uh, Palafaro says another attack's being reported as we speak. Let me go to my Twitter and see. Because at the beginning of this, um, and if you guys want to call in, feel free. I'll stay up for a little bit here. Um, the number scrolling across the bottom of the screen, one four zero eight six three eight zero nine six eight, And then you'll enter the meeting ID, 534-233-4758. Um, you guys can call in. As well. Uh, let me see here. Oh, I can go to my Twitter account here. All right. All right, I'm not seeing uh, anything on mine right here. Uh, Brian, could you send the link to me if you're still watching? So I have one from an hour ago, but I did I did uh, read the beginning of this. On this uh, article right here, um, it says Iraq official says airstrike targets and Iran back militia. So they're saying some were killed. They're saying that they weren't killed. Um, so, like I said, I, we haven't confirmed it, but then I'm reading a tweet right now that says that. Uh, All right, so there's one that says uh, Pentagon officials told Newsweek Friday evening the operation was targeted Imam al, uh, al brigades with a high possibility the strike resulted in the death of its leader, uh, Shabul al-Zadi. Uh, um, but I also said, you know, there was a, 
um, attack. Where is it at? Oh, Taji, right here. So what I usually do is I wait on confirmation because there uh, there has been a lot of misinformation going on around uh, the Twitter sphere. So I kind of just uh, kind of just wait and see what's going on with all that. Steve Lee, haha, ha, for watching, shut down now. Some people don't understand that it takes uh, time to start from somewhere. You gotta be one of those instant, instant gratification people, I suppose. I can do this. Oh, look who just got blocked. But anyways, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Uh, there's an article on CNN and Fox. Let me see. Yeah, if those people get on here like clowning and stuff, look, <laughs> I'm not going for like, I, this is a live podcast, so I obviously don't make money on YouTube. I don't have enough subs. Um, I'm monetizing my podcast. I just started live streaming my podcast. So for the guy that just got on here and said that, you know, smart comment before he got blocked off the page, um, I'm just on here to do it and give people a chance to call in. That's why I do it live. Then this is uploaded into uh, my podcast platform where it's available on every other platform, which it gets listened to all over the entire world. So, Yeah, I'm not seeing anything on it right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and uh, sub to the channel, like the video. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get off here. That's all I have for tonight. So until next time, you guys take care of each other. Shalom and y'all bless.
Thank you. 